Let's see what Google is saying about JavaScript. So I have a usual format for this uh, video structure. So let's start off with Google Trends. Um, yeah, so right now I'm looking at the five-year trend and you can see here in the graph, it's slightly, slightly going down. This is probably due to coronavirus here, you know, people are concerned about other things. But generally I would say it's fairly stable over the last five years. What else can we do? 2004 until present. Oh, you can see, so the Google searches have gone down. Does that mean that the language is less popular? I don't think so. Let's try uh, Python, for example. That will give us a relative uh, comparison. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Look at that, Python. Many more searches in Python than JavaScript or less. So you see Python's popularity has really shot up. But we're gonna look at other data points. We'll look at PHP. Everybody's favorite PHP. Yeah, so PHP is following the trend of JavaScript. Uh, let's add another one. How about uh, Java? Let's see what's going on with Java. So Java, well, you see how much more popular Java was relative to uh, back in 2004, relative to Python, PHP, and uh, JavaScript. But you see it's all kind of even out. So Java and Python are kind of neck and neck in popularity. Let's really remove some of these. I'm gonna remove PHP. This video is sponsored by Tab9. Tab9 is an AI code completion plugin, helps developers code smarter and faster, supports most languages and IDEs. As you guys know, code completion is one of the key technologies that developers should use. That means using an IDE and using code completions. And now with AI powered code completing software like Tab9, it takes it to a whole new level. So why do you want to code complete? You're gonna code faster, you're gonna code cleaner because it completes your code so you have less bugs, less typos, and you don't need to remember all the different methods and libraries and packages in the language that you happen to be using because the code completion, especially AI-based ones like Tab9, will help you get there much more quickly. Tab9 is trained on OpenAI GPT-2 neural network, so it knows human common knowledge such as the months of the year and their order. It practically predicts the exact code that a developer was about to type and gets better as you use it. Tab9 has a free forever basic plan. The pro plan offers external GPU power and therefore provides better predictions. That's the cool thing about AI-based software in that it improves over time on its own, whereas non-AI-based software, traditional software, the developer has to actually do the work to improve the quality of the product. So with Tab9, you have the power of code completion injected into your uh, favorite IDE. So you notice that Tab9 supports AI code completion, JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, PHP, Java, C++, Go, Rust. So covering a wide range of languages. In fact, Tab9 supports just about every modern programming language used today. Take a look at Tab9. The link is below. Very cool stuff. Remove, uh, remove, uh, oh, remove Java, remove Java, and let's add in what's everybody's, everybody else's favorite language. I don't know. Let's say uh, Rust. No, we're gonna go C plus plus, C plus plus, oh, C plus plus. There we go. And uh, C plus plus. Yeah, it's again. It looks like the. Uh, several of the other languages were were in their peak in terms of searches in 04, and since 09, they've uh, flattened out, whereas Python's really grown. That's interesting. How about, I will try Rust, move that. Let's add Rust. Rust, Rust uh, programming language, here we go. So Rust is, uh, woo, way down here. You can barely see it, uh, so not uh, too many people interested in Rust. Anyway, so we got a decent idea. So we see that uh, JavaScript is kind of flattened out 
with so many other languages. Like if we go C uh, sharp, for example, C sharp. There we go. Yeah, C C sharp as well uh, in green. C sharp in green, JavaScript blue, and Python in red. So Python has really made a huge its huge gains over you know since around 212 or so. So that's interesting. All right, let's just get into some JavaScript rankings next. So, um, yeah, so JavaScript rankings. I just did a search, a simple search on uh, Google. React.js, the first place in our best. So this is a site, uh, the, fest, the 13 best JavaScript frameworks. Oh, let's see what that looks like. All right, so this is uh, one place's opinion. So let's see what we got. Table contents, React, Vue, Angular, Ember, Pre Preact, Svelte, uh, Backend, Express, Next, Gatsby, Nuxt. There's a lot of stuff out there. Front-end JavaScript frameworks, they got their rankings. So React is number one, the first place in our best JavaScript framework. So this is their ranking according to what they like. Uh, who's this? This is Lambda test. So React. Then you got uh, React user statistics. Here we go. React was chosen number one front end JavaScript framework in, the st in state of JS 2019 survey of JavaScript developers around the world. The fourth consecutive year, React has polled at first place since 2016 ahead of mainstream rivals Vue and Angular as the best JavaScript framework. 71% of JavaScript devs are currently using React, whereas additional 12% have shown a keen interest in learning learning it in the future as per state of JS 2019 survey. So it was a couple years old, but in Stack's overflow developer survey in 2020, React was ranked second most popular web framework with 35% noted behind jQuery, votes behind jQuery. Whoa, jQuery is still 35% people use jQuery. It seems like jQuery may be, may be making a little bit of comeback. I don't know. Uh, which is said to be losing um, Share to React. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, approximately 1.5 million to 1.6 million websites have been built with React. To uh, okay, let's say pros of React. All right, cons of React. View. View is number two. It's the second place in our best JavaScript frameworks in 2020 rankings in the front end category it goes to View. View is an open source, lightweight front end JavaScript framework used to build creative user interfaces and high performance single page web applications. This is what we use, by the way. So there's many other view statistics. View is second place. 45% uh, of JavaScript devs are currently using view and pledge to keep using it while 34% have shown keen interest in, in to use it in the future. So view is very strong. So uh, view of course is uh, MVC. Anyhow, so let's uh, move on to the next kit. We can go on forever. We gotta keep this video a reasonable size. So let's move on to the next thing. All right, let's get back into it. Let's see what else is going on. JavaScript developer jobs. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, JavaScript developer, I'm gonna say in Montreal, Quebec, cause I'm in Montreal, but uh, let's see what we got here. Come on. So um, let's see, full stack developer, uh, temporary remote, 65 to 75,000 a year, full stack of hour, 25 an hour, which is about the equivalent of 50. That's uh, a pretty low for JavaScript. That's, equiv that's equivalent of 50,000 a year as entry level. 50, 90,000 a year, uh, front end developer. See, this is on the low end. Temporary remote, oh, PHP, WordPress. Oh, okay, so this is WordPress PHP job listing here. So uh, how many job listings? Let's see if we can get it in uh, New York, New York. New York, uh, USA. Let's see what happens here. Find developer jobs in New York. All right, New York. How many jobs? 2,000 jobs with JavaScript developer in the title on just Indeed. Again, similar salary, but in USD, right? 65, 75,000 a year, 55. Front end developer. So a lot of jobs in JavaScript for sure. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Just a simple JavaScript search. This is always most interesting to me. Um, yeah. 
Let's check it out. Okay, how do I turn on JavaScript? Okay, whatever. Okay, so what do you have to say? How do I enable JavaScript in Chrome? Okay, we can do that. Is JavaScript easy to learn? JavaScript isn't hard to learn, but it's, if it's your first programming language, adjusting to the mindset requiring for programming take a lot of time. JavaScript is actually one of the easier programming languages to start with. In fact, there are several resources available to learn it. Uh, let me comment on that since I've been teaching for 10,000 years. JavaScript is fairly easy to learn. It's one of the, the, the three programming languages I teach. I think that JavaScript is pretty cool. To learn JavaScript, though, properly, you have to learn HTML and a touch of CSS because a lot of JavaScript, most of JavaScript is done in uh, browser uh, development. You can, do, you can do JavaScript coding on, in the web browser. Think of you know, forms and animations in a web browser, uh, validating forms. Um, it can also be used on the server with something called Node.js, and you can use frameworks like Express.js. Frameworks are just bunches of code that make it easier for coders to develop stuff. All right, I think I'm going to sneeze. So let's jump back in. Uh, is JavaScript free to install? Yes, okay. If you want to learn JavaScript, the biggest advantage of JavaScript is it is free. Well, yeah, it's all these programming languages are free in all honesty, uh, whether it be JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, they're all free. The advantage of JavaScript, you don't, if you have a web browser, you don't have to install everything because the JavaScript engine, the software that runs JavaScript is built into every web browser, so you don't need to install anything, whereas PHP, Java, C Sharp, uh, uh, Python, you have to install something. And um, Python makes it easy, but uh, what you call it, uh, coding with PHP, a little bit more difficult, a little bit more tricky sometimes to set it up. Not huge, but uh, Python is pretty easy to install too. But biggest advantage of JavaScript in terms of learning is that if you have a web browser, you have JavaScript ready to go. All right, let's get back into it. Uh, is JavaScript front end or back end? Short answer, it's both. JavaScript depends on the host environment, the most common of which is the browser in case, in that case, front end. Front end just means it's in front of you. Uh, it's in the web browser. Uh, if you're not sure, check out my JavaScript course at studioweb.com. JavaScript can also run on the back end. There are several server side hosting environments, yeah. Um, do I need JavaScript? You don't need JavaScript for the majority of applications out there. To deliver the core features of your application website, websites should be built with the assumption that JavaScript is unavailable. Yeah, that's um, a basic design practice. So despite what this, this, uh, this um, I don't know, the snippet of an article just said about JavaScript, you don't need it, but if you're going to be building websites and web apps, there's a 99% chance you're going to be using JavaScript. That said, they're right. As a basic security and basic best practices in building websites and web apps, you don't want to depend on the JavaScript. Although, that being said, many apps do. Uh, Google Maps does. It won't work unless you have JavaScript enabled, as far as I know. Um, but as a general practice, if you can, you know, make, make your app work without needing JavaScript. And whatever you do, you don't want to have any uh, sensitive or security issues bound to JavaScript. Somebody could just turn off JavaScript or check out your JavaScript. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, let's go back. Is JavaScript harder than JavaScript harder than Java? Now, let's see what these people say. I'll give you my opinion. It is much easier, more robust than Java, and more robust than Java. I don't know what you mean that. I don't know. It allows for fast creation of web page events. That's true. Many JavaScript commands are what are known as event handlers. Yeah, yeah, they can be embedded right into existing HTML. Uh, JavaScript is a little more forgiving than Java. Okay, that's a uh, okay. That's an old article from 211. Okay, this is some nonsense in there. So let's ignore that. <laughs> Does it Windows 10 have JavaScript? Of course it does. Anybody has any modern web browser has JavaScript. JavaScript doesn't cost anything. Is it safe? So these are basically a bunch of it's interesting articles. Does Facebook use JavaScript? Of course it does. Uh, okay, so these are all. Uh, uh, oh, here's an opinion. Here uh, is Node better than JavaScript and PHP? So Node, if you don't know, Node is a JavaScript. 
uh, engine that's typically living in the browser. When I say engine, it's just software. You need software to run JavaScript. So JavaScript, the engine was ported. Uh, they made a version of it that runs on the server. If you don't understand this, just take my basic courses on, uh, or my pro, upcoming pro courses on web development will teach you all this. So Node allows you to run JavaScript on the server. There's certain advantages there, which we won't get into here. Uh, is it better? No, it depends on what you're doing. You know, I, we use both. They're both pretty good. All right, let's get back into it. I waited for time. We're almost done here. Uh, is Peach better than JavaScript? Is Node enough for a backend? It is. All right, so there you go. There's so much, <laughs> there's so much out there on JavaScript. Just so you know, uh, one last thing I want to bring up. Let's look at this Wikipedia entry. So JavaScript. Uh, is 25 years old, and it's still one of the most important uh, languages in the world today, right? Look at that, it's 25 years old. So one of the myths I like to dispel out there is that uh, you have to use the latest and greatest uh, software uh, uh, technologies out there, otherwise you'll be falling behind. The fact of the matter is, whether it's JavaScript, Java, C, C++, C Sharp, PHP, Python, these languages are 20, 25, 30 years old or older, and they're dominating the software development world, dominating. And um, that's because in any industry, you see a cycle of quick, quick and rapid change in development in the beginning, and then it, that curve flattens out, meaning the rate of change in the technology in that industry Stops, it stops evolving so quickly because they figured out how to do things well. Um, you see that now in software development. That's why you see these older 25-year-old, 30-year-old languages are dominant. Uh, and some of the new languages that have come up uh, since then, Cotton and Rust, they haven't really broken in so much because they could be, in some circumstances, somewhat better than the older traditional languages, but not that much better if at all, it depends who you talk to, but they, they're not replacing these old languages, that's what I'm saying. At some point, technology gets good enough. Think about uh, automobiles, cars. If you go watch some old videos or see some pictures about what cars looked like in the 18, 1850s or whatever, 1900s, early cars when you had uh, 200, 300 car manufacturers and people were trying to Develop different types of automobiles with three wheels and the steering wheels that had a knob on it. It's all these weird designs. But as the industry matured, they figured out how to uh, develop an optimal car. So whether you're looking at Audi, Porsche, uh, Chrysler, uh, Toyota, Fiat, whatever brand of automobile, they're all very similar, right? We all have the brakes and the same, you know, the way the steering wheel works, the way the gear shifting works. Oh, similar variants of each other. So if you learn how to drive an Audi, you can drive any other car, right? Because they all work pretty much the same way. The buttons are a little bit different, et cetera, et cetera. But it's kind of plateaued. And for the last like 30, 40 years, I would say, they've gotten better and so on, but they're pretty much, the structure is pretty similar. The only thing we're seeing now that's come out is the EV, electric vehicles, and that's the big evolution. But again, you see, once they figure this all out, it's going to be pretty stable in terms of uh, that technology. So you see that in software now. You see that. The MVC, which is a style of writing code, it's pretty much the same across all the languages, you know. Uh, and you see that the old established languages are just, you know, they're just updated and modernized and uh, they're refined over time. And that's what people use, including JavaScript. Anyway, I hope that was useful for you. Just a quick overview of what uh, JavaScript is all about and what Google is saying about JavaScript uh, on Google. <laughs> Bye.